So people seem to be very interested in learning about vertex colors, which is unfortunate because as of Blender 3.2, they are replaced with something called color attributes. And if you go here and look in the drop down, normally that is vertex colors in 3.1 and older, but now it's called color attributes. So I was playing around with the new color attributes features and I thought I could share the changes that I've noticed. So first of all, you can still go into vertex paint mode, which is nice. And the vertices and resolution of the mesh is still kind of like the resolution of a canvas. So if you've just got eight vertices, there's not a lot of detail you can paint in. It's just going to be whenever it hits a vert, then it creates the color. The changes happen when you go into sculpt mode. You can see down here, there's this brush that's just called paint, and we can actually paint the color attributes from sculpt mode. So if I just go ahead and start painting in here, you can see there's the colors that we had before, and we can just start going all crazy and painting things in here. Now it's pretty similar controls to what you're used to with a painting setup here, but we also have a lot more dynamics for the brush, which you can see here, we've got wet mix and we've got wet persistence and we've got a whole bunch of other things. So it's kind of like you can almost set it up to be watercolors. We've also got the uh, tip roundness and tip scale, which is interesting. We can also turn up the wet mix, which is kind of like dipping your brush in a glass of water before you start painting. And so a lot of these features are a little bit faster and a little bit more like you're actually painting, which is pretty cool. We've also got this brush down here called smear, which we can just go ahead and go crazy with. And in addition to all this, if we go down to this brush here, mask by color, we can select one of our colors and turn it into a mask, as the brush name would suggest. Now we can go up to mask and invert it if we want to just work on sculpting or painting in this area. So we could go ahead back to the paintbrush if we wanted and paint inside this masked area. Maybe we want a different color and that's pretty cool. And since this is in sculpt mode, it's a lot more tightly integrated to the color attributes. We can actually sculpt in this masked area which is pretty fun. That way the colors that we selected are the only ones that we can sculpt on. So another kind of minor change that I noticed is when we go back into object mode, we can actually still see our color attributes. I'm guessing if we had a different one selected here, we could just add a new one and that one is visible too now. And then we could just go ahead and paint a different layer if we wish. As you can see, our mask is still enabled. So I'm going to clear mask and we could go ahead and paint a whole nother layer here with the color attributes. Then we can switch back and forth in the panel and the object data properties. Most of the time I used vertex colors and probably now color attributes as masks for materials. So if you want to be able to use these results inside of a material, if we go to the shader editor, you can see if we add in a shift a input color attributes node, let's see, there it is. We can select the layer that we want and feed that into our material. So here's our color. We can go right into the base color if we want. And now when we render it, you can see our color is appearing. And without this, it's just white. So that won't render unless we plug in our color attributes node. So yeah, that's kind of the big overview. The difference mainly is that you can paint in sculpt mode and it's got a few more brush dynamics and you can use it for masking and such. And if you go back into vertex paint, there's a few less features from what I see in the painting tab. So from now on, I'll probably be doing most of my color attributes from the sculpt mode panel, which seems a little bit redundant to me, but I guess they probably have a plan for what they're going to do here. And I guess we'll see what that is in future versions. Now, another big advantage that I hadn't quite touched on is that I could see this being really useful when people are doing a lot more artistic kind of free flowing sculpting stuff and they want to just be painting right on top of everything. So if you've made it this far, I have a gift for you and that is free looping smoke assets. And these are videos that seamlessly repeat and I found them super useful in a lot of the visual effects shots that I work on to add life into my scene. And if it sounds useful to you, there's a link in the description where you can get these, like I said, for free. But other than that, I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.